Can I get your attention real quick, please? Folks, shh. You gotta be quiet real quick. They're gonna tell you again, but I'm gonna let you know there's no flash photography, no video cameras. Oh, it's working now. No flash photography, no video cameras. When we're done, we're gonna have you all stay in your seats. We'll let you go one row at a time. When you wanna ask a question, raise your hand. The girls will hand you the microphone. Put the mic. They'll pick you, you ask your question. Okay, we all got that? We all here to have fun? Y'all ready? So then the priest said, a good goat will do that. <laughs> welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Anyone first time here at Nerd HQ? Yeah. Welcome. Anyone been here before? <laughs> welcome home. I can see that just by how many people are here that you have raised just a hair under $5,000 by being here today for Operation Smile. I've been here since 10 a.m. We've been pumping out these panels at 5,000 bucks a piece. We've helped a lot of kids, you guys, with their cleft palates. So severe that infants cannot feed properly. Food won't go in, absolutely true. Cleft palate so severe they can't eat. You guys are giving children a chance at life and thank you very much for doing that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know if anyone's already told you, I might be repeating this, so forgive me. You guys, you're welcome to take pictures. Flashes, turn them off. Video, don't do it. We got a couple guys on cameras, my guys at the back, my gentleman right here, working for us really hard on this amazingly technologically advanced equipment. <laughs> a couple of years ago, a movie came out. The title sounded exciting. A little bit naughty. The commercials, the trailers were to die for. Thank God it was a huge hit, incredibly good, so they could make a sequel. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to welcome, please, from the Kick-Ass 2, Jeff Wadlow, Mark Miller, and John Romita Jr. Please come out here, guys. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, this is amazing. What a cool venue. Uh, Jeff, you insisted on uh, four more chairs. I don't know why I'm not gonna ask. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna move from chair to chair over the course of the interview. Just I like that. I, I get a little overheated and yes, I need one, a cool seat. One cha chairs for short people. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, it, it, you, you wanna do is just come, come to the edge there. Come right to the edge there, there you go. That's the big boy the chair, John. That's the one. They are rather deep. They are rather deep. We got them cheap. Yeah. All right, never mind. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. Kick-Ass 2. First of all, thank you. <laughs> Which ones of you, if any, had anything to do with Kick-Ass 1? Well, these guys created Kick-Ass. Right, John, Mark and thank John you. are the uh, the creators of the comic. So, with, without Mark and John, there is no kick ass. Without your royalties, there is no kick ass as well. So, thanks very much. You know. And Jeff, how did you come into this? So basically, I saw Kick Ass One in theaters just as a fan. Right, I, I didn't know any of these assholes. I just went and saw the movie. Mr. Uh, um, and uh, I was working on another project, and I pitched it to Matthew Vaughn, the writer, director, and producer of the first film, and the producer of Kick-Ass 2. Um, and then he went and made X-Men, so I wrote the script, and I sent it to him, and he called me back. He said, the script is great, it's just like the pitch. And I was like, yeah. And he said, uh, so you, uh, you do what you say you're gonna do. And I was like, yeah. And he said, uh, do you wanna do Kick-Ass 2? And I was like, yeah. And then uh, we ended up here. 
Nicely done. Folks, you're going to have some questions. Raise up your hand. Our ushers on the side are going to hand you a microphone. Once you have a microphone, hold it up, and we'll know to, to call on you. you have, do you have one already? Yeah. A question or a microphone? <laughs> we'll get the microphone to you. I think he's got a voice strong enough without, without a microphone. Once, you, once you've got a story, you got Kick-Ass. It's a comic. Yeah. It's already kind of storyboarded. It's already kind of, the movie's kind of... Yeah, I just phoned it in. I literally, like, showed up, held up the comic book, on set, dropped it. Like, it's done, bitches. Walked away. <laughs> comic drop. Cheating. I wish, he was around, out. I wish he was around during contract negotiations. <laughs> Go ahead, let your, uh, let's let your question rock. Uh, yeah, all right. So, I kind of look like the kick-ass movie is, like, the serenity of the superhero like world. This movie that didn't quite make, <laughs> didn't quite make as much money as it should. But that is an amazing money. hybrid setup. I love it. I think there's gonna be a fight. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just didn't make as much money as it should. But we all love it. It comes on TV. I can't stop watching it. I mean, I've got the DVD of course too. But um, Marvel seems to have done it. But you guys did it too. I think you guys did it early. You cracked the code on how to take a comic book movie and mo make it, or make it awesome and be faithful to the book. How the hell did you do it? Because DC. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Well, I think you'd been a bit tough on Green Lantern. <laughs> You're the Super only one. Superman was good too. <laughs> you got to blame Time Warner for that. You can't blame DC. No. So, to be fair, they make the occasional good Batman film, you know, but yeah, the rest does suck. It does pretty well. <laughs> so what was the question? Do you know, I think Marvel, Marvel actually, it's a very good point. They remain true to the material, and I think that's what Jeff did, and it's what uh, Matthew did in the first film. The minute you deviate from it, fans get pissed off, and everybody gets pissed off, you know, and you don't enjoy the movie. Marvel were very clever, you know, they stayed really true to the Stan and Jack stuff, you know, and I, th I think that's the secret. It's, it's so, it's, it's a unique story. The, the other, st Superman, Batman, that character's been around forever. These are, this is a unique story. It's very in original, and uh, damn well drawn, too. <laughs> I think it's about being true to the ideas. I think, you know, you, you have to give the fan base credit, right? There, it, while it's fun to see Easter eggs that are direct references to the comic, like I have some compositions that echo what John did in the book, I think it's much more important to be true to the ideas and acknowledge that a movie is different than a comic book, but fans want to see the big ideas on the big screen, and they'll cut you some slack if some things change. I mean, like, Mindy's mom is... Uh, alive in the comic, but not alive in the movie. And I, I think you guys are savvy enough to know that sort of thing doesn't matter. What matters is, are the big ideas there? Are the characters you love there? And, and do you feel the same way when you see the movie that you felt when you read the comic book? I think you want to see little kids swearing as well, don't you? I mean, that's, that's what DC needs to be doing, more shit like that. <laughs> I honestly think that Hit Girl is why it sticks. The movie has to have Hit Girl. I mean, the, the, the book has Hit Girl in it, and the movie has to have Hit Girl in it. You have to stick to that. She's such a great character. I guess everything sticks. I love there's a couple of costumes, but Hit Girl to me is what makes everything great about the, the two, two movies. I'm sorry, I'm so attached to the character, I can't, I can't pass on. Every I time you, you say that, that, Aaron Johnson sheds a tear. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm just a fan of the character, and I think that's important. And you have that, to stick to that. That character worked out so very well. What a standout performance in the film. What a great character. How surprised are you with that little girl who, who pulled it off? Oh, she, she's 47 years old. She's just... <laughs> she's, uh, <laughs> it's Jodie Foster. <laughs> no, I mean, she smokes like a chimney, you know? I mean, that's why... And she's about that height, her but voice, she's a terrible diet. Her voice is... Oh, yeah, why? <laughs> but she really acts... She acts it well. Talented young lady. Beautiful. Talented. You gave her a potty mouth. <laughs> Do you feel bad at all? She made all that up herself. We didn't What? That I, got, <laughs> I got to tell you a story. When Mark first put the sea bomb in the book at the end of, the, at the end of that scene, I, I know Brits use that word the way we use bitch, the way we use common. I said, Mark, you can't do that in America. They, you, that, you can't use that word. It's the worst thing you could possibly say. And having a girl say it is worse. I don't care. I'm going to put it in. So I, I spoke to Matthew Vaughn. I said, Matthew, you can't use this word. He says, yes, I can. I'm the, I'm the producer. I can do whatever I want. I'm a director. <laughs> yeah, but you're going to... And then all of a sudden we hear that there's a chain of movie theaters in the South 
that didn't want to run the movie because of that word, I said, Matthew, again. he says, I don't care. Sorry. I'm the boss. I do whatever I want. How do you argue with that? Uh, the, ni the nice thing is that standards in the country have slipped so much that now we don't mind. <laughs> it's, it's in the next film all the time. It's great. You know? <laughs> Please go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate the book and the movie. It's awesome. And I, I do love Pit Girl. That's one of my favorite characters. Now, with the book, uh, Kick Ass 2, I know it's like much more violent than the first one. Now, in terms of the movie, um, were you able to go overboard with the violence since the book is kind of comparable, or there were some tone downs to uh, certain scenes? Well, the, f the first movie was done on a really tight budget, so a lot of the people died making it, you know? <laughs> so so we, we had to tone it slightly for the second one, you know? But I'll leave this to, to Jack. Uh, I mean, in all seriousness, you know, I was very lucky in uh, the fact that I was working with Mark and John, and, and in an early conversation I had specifically with Mark, he said to me, you know, you gotta make your movie, right? And, and the, the book is its own thing, and film and comics are different mediums, and you have to lean into the strength of your medium the way, you know, we leaned into ours. Um, and so there are choices in the second one, you know, that you guys did for effect with the comic that, you know, when you're making the movie, I felt it was my responsibility as a storyteller to try to elicit the same emotion, and it didn't mean we had to literally do the same thing. Uh, because it's, a movie's just different. You're dealing with real people. You're not dealing with representations of people, no matter how well they are drawn. Uh, and it just changes everything. And we have music. I mean, there's so many things that we can do uh, to connect with our audience. So for me, it was about just honoring the story and making the best movie possible as ordained by uh, Mark. But you just, you've got to trust the director, you know, and, and know they're going to do it right. You've got to see the, the comic as distinct from the movie. I mean, Jeff's got a huge 10-year career as a director in pornography. And, uh, <laughs> and who, who am I to mess with that? You know? you know, this shit is gonna be on the internet now, right? <laughs> oh, I've seen some of your shit on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. Over where? Who has a microphone? Don't be shy. Um, I'm really excited for the movie. I just want to know if there's one line in it, because when I read the comic, this line made me cry in tears because it was so funny. It was something about... Shit, I hope it's in it. <laughs> <laughs> the exact line, because I had to take a picture of it, was, we need to hunt this fucker down and make him wish his dad finished on his mom's tits. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Paints a picture. Yeah, I, I forgot about that one. So much. <laughs> That's actually an old family saying. <laughs> <laughs> we, director's cut? We should get a director's cut. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll loop it in now, just for you. <laughs> I'm sorry that that's your favorite line. <laughs> <laughs> There's two policemen at the back waiting for you. Who's got a microphone? Good. My turn. <laughs> when you create something and you're going to hand it over to be made a movie, is there a fear of, oh my God, they're going to destroy this, my baby? Is there a fear of, once I relinquish control of this story? Uh, no. When they told me that I have my name up on a movie screen, I said, you do whatever the hell you want. I was happy. <laughs> no, I didn't have any fear. Honestly, because I was so happy that this was going to happen. The first film and now this. I, 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 I'm a geek. I'm more the business end of this and the art part of it stopped when I finished the book to see that there's going to be a production made out of it. I had, I still can't stop giggling about it. I stood up in the first premiere. I stood up. My wife had to drag me down. Sit down and act like you've done this before. <laughs> but I've never done this before. I couldn't. Was that the premiere at the Cinerama Dome? Is that the big. Uh... No, no, no. We were in London, I think. Oh, London. And London. all the other Brits were just. <laughs> tut, tut, tut. <laughs> Truth. It's like being in the end zone for the first time and slamming the ball down and falling down, making a fool of yourself. Where were you when you got the call? About Matthew? Um, I actually, I was at a party um, at, at Matthew's house, the director, 
and I, 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 we were chatting, and like uh, it was, it was a Stardust. You know the movie Stardust, the movie Matthew did just before it. And uh, he and I got chatting. I, I, I just, I don't know how I got invited to that party, you know. And I was, because it's, it's pretty <laughs> swish. I was the only person there who wasn't powerful or famous or anything. It was a really cool night, and I somehow ended up chatting to Matthew. And uh, I, I, I said to him, you know, we should do something together. And we talked about another project. It was a thing called American Jesus, where we're going to do. And Matthew and I, for about two weeks, we're going to do American Jesus. And then I sent him down the, this instead, and he was like, this is awesome, this is the one we've got to do. And it, it was weird, it was just like two pals just chatting. Somehow he managed to get $28 million from someone, and then, and then a movie happened, it was crazy. It was very organic, it was, it was how movies should be made. Yeah, two, two, two drunks at a party, I like that. Where were you when you got the call? Um, well, what happened with, uh, with, with me on the film is, you know, I had a lot of conversations with Matthew about it, and then I didn't really hear back from him for a little while. So I just sat down and wrote it and sent it to him, and he's like, you wrote it. And I said, well, you asked me to. Um, remember that whole thing we talked about? I do what I say I'm gonna do. And so uh, he, he said, it's great, we should make it. That easy. Yeah, it was that easy. You know what? I don't think it was maybe that easy. That doesn't, that sounds a little too easy. No, it really was. And it's really a testament to Matthew Vaughn because he makes shit happen, and not a lot of people can do that in this world. You know, it's, it's a funny thing to say, but the truth is uh, there's a lot of talk, a lot of hot air, very little gets done most of the time, but when Matthew says he's going to do something, he doesn't. And the thing is, he is independently super rich, right? So if you need 100 million to make a film, Matthew will find it, like, in a week or something. It's crazy. <laughs> Any one of you, if you're interested, just give him a call, you know? <laughs> but, like, I, 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 when I met Matthew, I was quite stunned because most directors I know are fat guys with beards and baseball caps and everything. They're just re regular guys, you know? You'll never work with those producers again. <laughs> <laughs> but but Ma Matthew, like, uh, I went down to his place expecting just a re you know, regular guy in the film business. And he has a guy who looks like Odd Job from the Bond films. He's got th <laughs> three, three of those guys. He has Bentleys and all this kind of thing. You know, he has a, a house that's bigger than Wayne Manor. And he genuinely is married to Claudia Schiffer. You know, it's like, Ma Matthew makes shit happen. It's quite impressive, you know? So. I actually, when it happened to me, Mark uh, had a nice long conversation on the phone with me. Tell me about it. And I didn't understand what the fuck he said anyway. <laughs> so I went on weeks before I realized what he had said. <laughs> I just thought he was doing what he's doing now, just kind of rambling on. And... <laughs> right, right, right. So I got a contract in the mail. I said, what? oh, Mark, I... he wasn't lying to me. Was... We had a question right here. Uh, hi, thanks for being here. I just had a question about whether or not and how much the Hit Girl storyline is being integrated into Kick-Ass 2 or not. Oh, it's, uh, I mean, Jeff... Uh... Jeff's done amazing stuff with Hit Girl in it. It's, it's maybe my favorite parts of the movie. The Jim Carrey stuff and the Hit Girl stuff are the two real standout from the comic. They're, they're my two favorite things. Like the, the, the movie, weirdly, this is kind of confusing. The movie is actually sort of using stuff from the Hit Girl series and Kick-Ass 2, you know? But Jeff's kind of streamlined a lot of the stuff from the Hit Girl thing. It was, it was just a little bit too much to get in one movie. But you know the cool stuff with the kind of high school stuff and Hit Girl getting picked on by school bullies? That stuff is awesome. It's amazing in the film. Like, I've got a 15-year-old daughter, and she's going to go apeshit when she sees this, you know? <laughs> when she pays to see this. <laughs> um, what's changed for you guys? Since, since the, these movies are coming out, what's changed? What's, how, how has life changed for you? Uh, oh, go ahead. I mean, uh, I was in London for the whole year. What most people don't know about Kick-Ass is it's a British film. You know, the first film was made in England. It was uh, financed out of England. It was a uh, UK crew. Matthew's British. Uh, I, the stories I've heard about the first film is basically the only American on the set was the guy shooting the EPK. So any any time they would have like questions like, do toilets actually look like this in America? You know, they would ask the EPK guy. They would say, get, get the American in here. Um, <laughs> And uh, so I, you know, I went to London and, and used the same crew. I mean, I hired all the same department heads and, and used some of the same locations. Uh, and so I was the new guy, and I became the American, um, and I had a great time. So spending a year over there was, was quite different. I only got back middle of May. I mean, I literally finished mixing the movie, got on a plane, and came back. It was, my, it was the last day of my visa, so I, I'm pretty sure I've been kicked out of the country <laughs> at, uh, at that point. And so since I've been back, I've just been getting back to life in Los Angeles and setting up some new projects and just uh, getting really excited about showing the movie to the world. I'll tell you something weird. When Jeff was in London for just over a year, there was 28 murders in London, in the London area. There was nothing before, nothing after. I don't, I, I'm just pointing this out, you know? 
The, I, the difference to me is that I cannot stop acting like a kid about this. I haven't looked at it as a business sense, in the business sense. The art is one thing, but I, I, I'm, I cannot stop giggling and laughing and smiling. I, I don't tell people voluntarily, but the minute they ask a question, I go on a 25 minute screed <laughs> That the, and I can't stop it, and I giggle, and what are you laughing at? I said, because somebody made a movie out of something I did. You have no idea how good that feels. And my name was on a screen. <laughs> then I actually got in the first film. This is, the, this is funny, I got, I got in the first film. They had me facing the camera. I was the barista. I didn't know what a barista was. <laughs> I thought it was a lawyer, because we were in England. So. So Matthew says, all right, what you got to do is, uh, the, the, the actress, I forgot the actress that played his girlfriend. Uh, he's going to ask you to turn the television on. I'm Lindsay. Lindsay, right? Was it Lindsay? Lindsay, Lindsay Fonseca, yeah. So I was going to say, all right, I look at her, and then I turn, I turn the television. So the first thing I said to Matthew was, what's my inspiration for this moment? <laughs> and he did not get the joke. He said, just shut up. Just, just do it. Well, they edited my face out. And then wait, no, that's okay. I'm the, I'm the only authentic New York guy on this, in the whole movie. And I get edited out, and he says, well, you weren't authentic looking enough. <laughs> then Tarquin Pack says, don't worry, we'll get your name in the movie. So they used my last name, but they changed my first name. Oh. Tony Romita. I said, what the? I said, what about Johnny Romita? Johnny Romita's not tough enough. <laughs> I, these guys don't like me. But this was, I, the back of my head was in the film. It was great. My son, my son got in a film. That's all that mattered to me. My son is now, I am his hero for the rest of our lives. Do you know, I had a small cameo in the first film that got cut out as well, and it was in a graveyard, and they asked me to play a homeless drunk, right? A genuine... <laughs> and, and I swear to God, this is true, Sammy Sheldon, the, the costume girl, you know? I showed up, and I said, right, where's my outfit? And she looked at me, and she said, you look all right as you are, you look fine. <laughs> so I leave it. <laughs> that is true. We'll just clean you up a bit. It sounds like your experience was resoundingly positive. And I like hearing these things where art remains in the hands of the artists. Any kind of uh, hitches in, in the system where you, you had to answer to somebody who says, well, does Kick-Ass have to be in a green costume? <laughs> well, no, I mean, that's why Kick-Ass works is the movies are sort of made outside the studio system. Even though Universal uh, is releasing Kick-Ass to, it's an independent film. You know, we made it for 28 million, a lot less than, than most superhero films. So uh, we were able to really do what we wanted to do and honor the spirit of the material uh, and, and just have fun. Nicely done. Casting, what kinds of th things did you consider for casting? Well, again, because you know, I walked into the sequel uh, and I inherited a fantastic cast, but what was interesting is you know, there were no sequel options. This wasn't like a Marvel movie where they signed on for 17 films. Uh, <laughs> The cast, you know, had no obligation to do the film. So there was a couple weeks that were a little scary where, you know, we'd heard, I'd heard rumblings that, you know, they probably weren't going to want to do it, blah, blah, blah. It's probably a lot of posturing on their rep's part to uh, get more money. Um, but still made me nervous. So the script went out, and, and Chloe and Chris and Aaron read the script and immediately said, yeah, we're in. We're in. Um, and so that was a huge... Uh, it really boosted my confidence to have those guys uh, respond so favorably to the material. But then uh, I had a lot of fun uh, casting a, a ton of new roles because what these guys did in the second series, which was so exciting, was they showed that the movement had spread, that this thing David started had really caught on. So we had all these fantastic characters like the Colonel and Night Bitch and Dr. <laughs> Gravity. Um, and, and what I got to do too is I got to create some villains and flesh out some of the other teams. Uh, I created characters like The Tumor and Genghis Carnage uh, and Black Death, um, not at all racist. And, uh, and so we, it was just a blast to blow that out and then go and find the actors to play those parts. And, and normally when you make a movie, and I'm sure you can sense it when you watch the movie, most filmmakers won't admit it, but it's true, there's one person that you're sort of like, ah, they didn't really work out the way I hoped they'd work out, you know, or they, didn't really, they weren't into the movie, or they didn't really bring their A game. And I gotta say, everyone just brought it on this one, uh, mostly because we, we, we paid them very little, and so <laughs> if they were there, they wanted to be there. The, uh, there's a, a little note about the uh, Mother Russia in the book. Uh, there's a lady that works out at my gym. I hope she doesn't hear this. 
She's, this is being streamed globally. Yeah, right? well, so, she uh, might hear this, but she is just as big as the, the actress, as powerful as the actress in the film, the Russian actress. But when I first met her, her hair was stringy. She was just coming back from a run. And she's in that condition that, you know, women bodybuilders get just before they, they get filmed. Just hollow cheeks and just every sinew was showing. And she looked awful, even though she's an attractive lady. She looked horrible. And I... <laughs> She's gonna Here beat she the is. shit out of me when she's gonna twist me into a pretzel. She's a lawyer. She's brilliant. She, so I, she's I, literally I, twice your height, correct? She is not twice my height, but she's a head and shoulders above me. Close to, yeah. And her shoulders are in. So I fashioned it after her, and I, I wasn't flattering with it in any way because Mother Russia in the book is really ugly. But the point is that I hope the woman never sees the book. And I was hoping it wasn't gonna look exactly like her in the film. And thank God they went with with Olga. Doesn't look anything like the lady in the book. So this lawyer is never gonna see that book ever if I value my life. Yeah, you know, the, the casting process, being of casting, was really fascinating for Mother Russia because, you know, we wanted, you know, this massive presence. And and I was getting, you know, picked up, uh, I'm sorry, pitched fantastic actresses like like I think Katie Sackhoff's agent like pitched us her. And I was just like, guys, that's not what we're going for. <laughs> At all, you know, they would be insulted to know that you're you're pitching them for this role, and uh, it, it was a hard part to cast because we wanted someone so physically imposing, and and these people, are, you know, are not showing up for auditions. They don't have agents, so it became really a, a global search. And and at first, we weren't really finding anyone because I was sending Mark and John the tapes, and we had to start to get really proactive. And I I would find these like fetish sites for female bodybuilders. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on like a lot of weird watch lists now. And, and I became friends with this one webmaster who had like all their contact information. And I would start like sending emails like, hey, we're making this movie. Do you think you know you could put yourself on tape? And I would get responses back like, is it a reputable company that you work for? Um, and we had like one woman's boyfriend uh, email the casting director and said, do not contact us again. Uh, so it was like a really difficult thing to find. Olga, but when we did, we were just like, boom, this is it. You know, she was she was perfect from the get-go. And we, we put her through the ringer. We had her do screen tests and fight tests. Um, but but we knew she was the one as soon as we met her. Was her hair like that? Did she bleach her hair for the foot? No, her hair was like that. Okay. Her hair was like that. And she's well, a sweetheart. She was very pleasant. And she she can not speak a lick of, of English, which is challenging for directing someone. <laughs> But she learned it phonetically, the lines phonetically. Yeah, so lines it was really up. weird when I met her, she pre-prepared saying, hello, my arc. And <laughs> I was like, what's up with this woman? And I found out that she'd been planning it for like two days. You know? Actually, she said to me, the first thing she said was, you know, these guys think I don't speak English. <laughs> I understand everything they say about me. There was a question over, who has the mic? Please stand up. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, just first of all, best of luck. I hope Kick-Ass 2 makes a shit ton of money so we can get Kick-Ass 3. Shit ton. Right? I don't know what that actually translates into cash. It's metric. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, Mark, John, uh, uh, my question is, uh, can you give us a little bit of a sneak peek or behind the, behind the scenes as to how you pick the color palettes for uh, the kick has costume and hit girl. Uh, when you walk the con and you see a purple wig, you know it's hit girl. You see a, 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 a green one, you know it's kick ass. It's become sort of iconic for all of us fans. So, yeah. did you toy around with different color palettes or something? Uh, I, the color artist, Dean White, called me uh, and actually he probably sent you copies of different colors of the costume. Uh, I, I I, he, he contacted me and said, What color do you want? I said, There's Roy G. Biv, baby. Just pick whatever you want and make yourself happy. And he sent about three different color versions of it. But it was the same costume, and it had the yellow, and he just altered it, and, and the green just stuck. I, I'm always a fan of green. It's just my, it's the best color in the world. It's in hospitals to make your eyes feel better, because it's the opposite of red, by the way. And only artists know that. Um, <laughs> the head girl costume in the book is much different from the movie, and the movie came out from the costume designer the way it, it, it did. The book version um, is Dean White again, and he sent me a whole bunch of versions of it, and I loved everything he sent, but the colors that we chose for the book ended up looking very, very sharp to me. I loved that it was analogous, and I loved it, and I loved the, the, co the, uh, the color of her hair, and it was based loosely on the book version. I'm happy with it, but it was Dean White, the color artist. Nice. Is there another microphone out there somewhere? Good, back to me. <laughs> if you were to right now write a movie 
about a superhero starring me. Cap Captain Hubris. I find this role too challenging. Has this uh, in, in any way given you so, any kind of a m more lofty aspirations? Say, you know what, we, we did it, we did this. Now let's do... Anything that I come up with. I exactly, does it, does it give you a, does it give you a, a sense of... Hey, no, that, actually it's a great question that a couple of people have asked it. A lot of people, do you now, because you've made, had a film made from your product, do you think about that when you create a product? Exactly. N and I can't because that is the, that's counter to what we did is that the movie started filming while we were working on the first series. And it, I think to anticipate what was gonna be done with it would have changed what we wanted to do. And I'm also not talented enough to know that what I'm gonna do is gonna become a film. I just <laughs> do it because it, ma it makes me a buck and I can put food on the table. And that's all I'm thinking of is I'm greedy, but somebody picks it up. Uh, if somebody picks up my, uh, I have a, a product called Schmuggy and Bimbo based on two guys that grew up with my parents in the 40s, two hit men. And, and that name, Sicilian, alone, Sicilian. that name alone should make a movie, Schmuggy and Bimbo. <laughs> and B Bimbo looked like Zero Mostella after drinking a whole weekend, a big ugly guy, and Schmuggy's a guy that looks like a baseball mitt. Those two, <laughs> those two character sheets alone should make a film. But I don't think of it that way. And now I have, to come up, I have to come up with a good story. We'll see. But I can't think of it in that respect, because I'm not good enough to, have, to think that people are going to jump from that. This guy comes up with an idea every time he goes to the bathroom, and that's what he That's a urination. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny, a lot of my stuff has been picked up and turned into films, but a lot of my friends have even said to me, oh, you're just doing it to get the movie deal. But in all honesty, when you look at my stuff, it's so objectionable that I can't believe they're making it into films, because I, I genuinely just do it for fun for myself, you know? And, I mean, like, kick-ass people were saying, oh, you just did it to get a movie deal. The, op the opening scene has the hero masturbating to... The, 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 it's like Spider-Man masturbating in the opening scene, essentially, <laughs> to African tribes women, right? I mean, think about it, you know? And then you have a little 10-year-old girl dropping the C-bomb and killing guys and all that. It's like, what sane studio would ever make a movie out of that? And yet it keeps happening. So I find myself pushing it every time and thinking, will this work? Will these guys go for this? And they do, again, America is fucked. You know, it's like, why, why, are, they, why are they buying all these books? <laughs> I think he just said the same thing I said, but he said it in a nicely colorful way. Yeah. It's the accent makes it charming. You raised an excellent point. Your hero masturbating to African tribeswomen. <laughs> when you have access to the entire internet. Well, he just picked up a National Geographic. Stop it, so. It's autobiographical. Yeah. <laughs> Th this, is, this is the longest I've gone without masturbating. Oh! <laughs> I may have to go in a minute. That, that's why we have the extra chair, so we can move away. All of you in the front row are in danger. How have these uh, Comic-Cons uh, been for you guys, this whole experience? Uh, have you been to cons before? Yes. Enjoying them? I, I, I mean, with, with the comic first? With Kick-Ass? Yes. Yes, we did it when the first film came out. We did this kind of thing at, at Comic-Con. How do you like the reception? What do you, what do you think of the energy? The reception is, the people are so nice to begin with that enough, your enemies really don't say anything. All the people that like you say something. Right. So you can't tell. But I get occasionally, <laughs> somebody will come up and say, I think you suck, but could you sign my book anyway? Uh, but because of Kick-Ass, the people that come to it for the purpose of seeing the people that create a Kick-Ass, generally you get a positive response. But that's what this convention is like in general. The people there for positive reinforcement, it really is very flattering. It's great on the ego. Absolutely true. Yeah, you get to be a rock star for a weekend. Sure. sure. Yeah. <laughs> was this your, uh, was Kick-Ass your first convention as well? Uh, in 2009, I came along, because uh, we didn't have a studio. It was really weird. Like, Matthew, like I say, raised the money... Uh, independently and then made the movie and then tried to sell it. So what was amazing about Comic-Con, every time I hear Comic-Con now, I, I thank my lucky stars because the buzz that was generated at Comic-Con 2009 meant that the next day Matthew could go to the studios and say, are you interested in this movie? And the first thing they did was check Twitter and they were like, yes, because everybody was like, it looks awesome. He showed 20 minutes of the film and created an amazing buzz. If, if you guys had hated it, you know, he'd be, uh, he'd be down to his last 250 million, you know? <laughs> Jeff, Comic-Con for you? 
Yeah, I, this is actually my seventh Comic Con. Wow. Um, I, I come down as a fan all the time. In fact, I was I was down here as a fan when I got the call. I was down here nine years ago, and I got the call that Universal was going to release my first film. Uh, the head of the studio called me and said, yeah, we're going to release it. And then a year later, I did a Hall H panel for the movie. And uh, it was a little movie. Most of you didn't see it, I'm sure. Um, but it, we, they placed us between The Rock and the first footage of King Kong. So the place was just at, like, capacity. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was really exciting. Um, so I love it here. You know, when, when they said they were going to bring Kick-Ass 2 here and really launch the movie here because it is such a love letter to you guys, um, they were like, but you, you know, you only have to come for one night. It's only a one night commitment. I was like, but you're going to get the hotel for all four nights? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, I'll be there all four nights. <laughs> now, you mentioned earlier uh, staying true to the story because there's going to be fans. Are there so many fans that you don't want to piss them off? Is that what's going on? Or is it, we have a story, we know it works because it has fans. Why change it? I mean, the it? story was shit. Uh, no. The, no, I think what it really is, is I, I'm a fan, first and foremost, so I want to tell the story that I love, and, and that's the story that's in the book. So I'm not... I mean, look, you're going to piss someone off. You're, someone's going to love it. I mean, you can't really think too much about that. I just kind of go with my gut. Um, and, and, you know, obviously you have gut checks along the way. Mark and John, Matthew... Um, and everyone kept saying, no, no, you're on the right track, you're on the right track, so I just kept running. I just realized all those names are biblical. <laughs> Mark, John, Matthew, and Tarquin. <laughs> Tarquin Jim. Pack. Is he here? I want to insult him with behind his back. Is he? Uh, no? Okay. Tall, skinny, Brit bastard. <laughs> That's Comic-Con. This is Nerd HQ. How did you get involved in this? I'm still trying to figure that out, Nathan. Who called, you, who called you up to say, hey, we got this little thing going on. It's not really quite Comic-Con. It's a little off-site. No, they, they told us about it, and I think it's really admirable, you know, uh, what, 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 what's going on here, the way you're raising money for Operation Smile, and it's, I, I'm a big fan of that charity, and when Universal talked about it, I was like, yes, please. I mean, the Fox panel's going on right now, and, and Mark and I both have a uh, vested interest in what's transpiring there, but we are just so excited to be here to, to help out and talk about Kick-Ass. Uh, I can't imagine being there. Well, what do you mean the money's going to smile? I thought we were getting this money. Was going to go. <laughs> we're going to talk later, Mark, you and I. I'll talk to you about that. I got five bucks for you. Jeff, I would like you now to tell me just exactly what we're planning for these four chairs over here. Well, we, we have a special surprise for you guys. Uh, we have some of the cast from Kick-Ass 2 joining us right now. We have... These guys really need no introduction, but we have Christopher Mintz Ploss, who plays the motherfucker. This is crazy. Lindy Booth is Night Bitch. Don Leguizama is Javier. And Donald Faison, the Billy D. Williams of Kick Ass 2. I stole your joke. Dr. Gravity. What up? Thank you for joining us, guys. I had no idea what we were walking into. This is no awesome. Idea. Holy cow, that's Nathan. amazing. <laughs> Hug it up, bitches. They're, Holy they're, cow. They're clearly very surprised, too. They're like, and surprise, Nathan. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Welcome. Hey, thank, thank you. Thank you for having us. Chris. Yes. You were in the first Kick-Ass. I was. Lovely job. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. Where were you when you got the call for number dose? Uh, I mean, it was, I didn't think we were gonna make the second one. It was four years after the first one, so I kind of lost faith. Uh, but Matthew Vaughn called me and said, I have a great guy, Jeff Wildlow, who's writing the script, and, and I had to do it. It was great. You, you actually broke the story here last year, I think. You were the first one to say we were making the sequel, and you did it at Comic-Con last year. I did, yeah, and I probably got shit for it. Yeah, I probably wasn't did. supposed to do <laughs> that, like, yeah. Shh, stop telling people that. <laughs> Lindy? Yes. Had you seen the first Kick-Ass? I saw the first Kick-Ass opening weekend and was a huge fan. Agreed. Huge, huge fan. Okay, I was yeah. right there too. I was right there too. Cinerama Dome. We did not go together. No, not together. Not together. There you go. I don't want to start anything. <laughs> um, 
Where were you when you got your call? Uh, probably at home, sitting on the couch, doing very well, little. Well, if you guys don't know, she is dating this man, so he probably just went, babe, you got the part. Like, <laughs> just turn. <laughs> There was no phone call. There was no Chris, phone call. Chris, you are so not an X Force. <laughs> well deserved. Like secrets. You are incredible. They're both well so well unbelievably deserved. red. Do you see how red both of them are? I love it. That's why I love white people, because you can see how. They're... Oh. You can see their colors change. Wait, 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 wait. You wait, color Mark guys is redder. In the corner. Mark is redder. What does that mean? I'm constipated. I'm constipated. Rosacea. Rosacea. I, went, I once dated a girl named Rosacea. What the I fuck are you I talking didn't. about, John? I'm a uh, yeah, nerd than you are, Lindy and I, I gotta say, Lindy and I worked together on Cry Wolf, that movie I was talking about earlier that was released Woo! eight years ago, uh, and she starred in it, and, and we've, we've been together since. So, uh, when Stammering I wrote, a lot. When I wrote Night Bitch, I wrote it with her in mind, uh, <laughs> obviously. I don't know what that's about. That doesn't sound right, dude. <laughs> you are so in right. trouble. You're not gonna be an X-Force either. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is Comic Con almost over. The <laughs> <laughs> mess up here. I'm gonna stop talking now. No, but well deserved. She, you auditioned. You didn't just get the part. You auditioned a bunch, and you deserve it. You're great in the movie. I am the shit. Thank yeah, you. Of course. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. No one got cast in this movie without Matthew Vaughn uh, deciding. So it is a testament to Lindy that she got the job in spite of dating me, because it was a big strike against her. Trust me. <laughs> We have, a, uh, we have a question right over here on the floor. Bam. Another Boom. One. Number one. That's who you are. Did you bring that mic with you? Or did you just, <laughs> <laughs> you just had it? I got lucky. Um, so just real quick, my criteria for friendship is they have to be able to watch Leguizamo's Freak and enjoy it and be comfortable watching guy love all the time. <laughs> That's all it is, is guy love. <laughs> you got to mind on his. in this world. That's right. So it's just cool seeing you guys here. Oh, um, cool. Right on. But happy to be here. The question is, uh, there was a lot of time between the first movie and the second. Maybe not a lot, but enough to be anxious. How did you guys celebrate when you got the word that two was ready? And how did you guys celebrate joining the team? Well, weirdly, the plan was always to do the second movie. It's just it took a while. Like, we found out in September uh, 2010 the second movie was happening, and I think... They probably contacted Jeff quite soon after, I, I reckon, you know? So, but, but I didn't know it was a secret, and I, I was telling everyone. And, and I didn't know that there is a strategy, right, which is you build anticipation, whereas I was like, yeah, we're doing the second one, you know? And, and Matthew kept emailing me saying, shut the fuck up. This is supposed to be a secret, you know? And, and it means you get a better deal from the studio and everything if you pretend it's not happening, you know? And, and you better, so now, now, next time, I don't know if there's ever going to be a kick-ass three, you know? I don't know if it's ever going to happen, you know? <laughs> But, but we've been talking about it for ages, and we were, I think it was trying to get the stars to align, like to find a great writer-director, to find a schedule, you know, that, that worked for everybody, because Chloe in particular just seemed to be in 10 movies and everything. And it just it finally all happened. But if it had gone on for one more year, it would have never happened, I think, because the actors it, would have been too... It, w it still was a scheduling clusterfuck, because uh, Chris was on a TV show and was, like, flying from, Lon uh, flying from L.A. to London, like, literally would walk off the plane, and we would, like put him in his costume and like kick him in front of the camera. Uh, and it's amazing. First of all, he's fantastic in the movie by any metric, but considering that he had to work that hard and spend that much time in the air and still create that performance, I mean, my hat's really off to you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you very much. John and Don. I'm great. I'm great. I love being here because... I, <laughs> I was in the Queens in New York when Jeff called me and I didn't know if I... You're an asshole. <laughs> I, 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 when Just I hear because an I have a disability. What? I didn't Just hear because you. I have a disability. I don't have a disability. <laughs> I have a Scottish accent. <laughs> give, go ahead, Mark. Give him your Brooklyn accent. I'm not Mark. Oh yeah, let me hear your. It was... <laughs> hey, you guys. What the hell's going on? <laughs> Better than I thought it was. Going. <laughs> that was great. Man. That was good. Really that was bad. good. <laughs> I, I'm speechless. That's a first. Um, <laughs> 
is there a point in the script for you, gentlemen, without spoiling too much, that you said, oh, that's the line. That's, I know exactly what to do with this whole, I'm going to act the shit out of this. I did, I felt that. I mean, I'm not a superhero in the movie. I'm just a regular dude, like I am in regular life. And I don't have special powers like I do in life. And, uh, <laughs> but I'm okay with that. I'm okay, I'm okay with myself. And uh, I play Chris's guardian, surrogate father, whatever, bitch. Uh, and, and I take care of him because his father and mo mother passed away and uh, he wants to be a, a, a villain and, and I'm trying to talk him out of it because I'm, I'm worried for him. And, and um, so I get Chuck Liddell to, to train him and make a man out of him and it doesn't work. And um, so then he asked me to gather Spoiler. the posse. Spoiler alert, candy <laughs> alert. Oh, have I really? No. Chuck Liddell, no, I mean, he's, right. no one cares. Right. Everybody the book. trailer. <laughs> never mind. No, Chuck. You Man, never heard it. And, uh, and that's what happens. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when I found out I was in the... Well, first of all, Jeff and I go back. We don't date like he and Lindy do, but uh, we did a pilot together. Well, I'm not going to... Yeah, I don't, don't want to... Don't tell about okay. us, Donald. So uh, we what? did a pilot together. And, uh, you know, I found out he was directing Kick-Ass 2, and I just, you know, emailed him. Yo, congratulations, man. He was like, dude, there's a part in this for you but you gotta audition for it. And I was like, all right, bet, I'll audition. So I auditioned for the casting director and then I auditioned for Jeff himself and I got the part. And that I, is not true at all. That is the I, honest to goodness I, I, truth, I, I, buddy. I'm telling you, that is not how it went How did it go down then? It's not how it went down. I wanted you for the part, but I needed the tape to show it to Matthew and the producers to make my case. Oh, I didn't know that. So there it is. <laughs> But and when I found out, better? that makes me feel so much better now, man. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. John John had to audition though. I wasn't convinced. No, not well, at we all. didn't know. We didn't. We, were, we weren't dating at the time, <laughs> so it's obvious I had to work for my part. <laughs> but, we get that one part. But my name is Zach. Sounds like two words. Got to say one more. Zach Braff? And then I can't speak. <laughs> Anybody want some gum? This is a mess, man. <laughs> we have time for no. one more. Well, no more questions. We have to wrap it up. I got Jim Caddy still. Come in. Come on. Wait a minute. I'm only kidding. He's he really said, uh, <laughs> come on in, please. Give us another minute. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> this is dope. This is no more, but no more. reality TV show. This is so bizarre. <laughs> One more. One more question. question. One last question. I think back here we have. Okay. Do not blow this. Don't let us down. Let's One fast more question. Can. Fast as possible. Um, I'll jump to you, Jeff, real quick. John, my kids almost mowed you down at Disney one time, and I go, Dad, you just you almost ran into John Leguizamo, and they're like, I go, Sloth, you almost nailed him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, Jeff, action. Wait a second. <laughs> well, no, not that kind of nail. Um, wow, there's a lot of sexual tension in this room. <laughs> so much. Uh, action, how did you approach it? The last film, a lot of the scenes were shot masterfully. Um, they just flowed like a comic book would progress. That had to be a hell of a challenge. How did you do it? I have a million questions for all of y'all, and I apologize, but thank you. Well, yeah, no, the bar was set very high, um, but, you know, I just really followed the, the story, and the story is about more people trying to be superheroes, and in the first movie, you have Mindy and Damon, you can do amazing shit, so that, that, led its, uh, that, that idea led to a certain style of action, whereas in our movie, it's about, like, Donald and Lindy and Chris, you know, really fighting, and, and, and they're not going to be able to do things the way... Um, Mindy and Damon did them, so it changed the vibe for the action in a very organic way, and I just tried to be true to the story. That was actually a really good last question. Well done. Excellent. Nice wrap-up. <laughs> Jeff, Mark, you guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much for popping by and surprising us all. Thank you for Absolutely. having us. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We know you guys are busy, that you donate your time to... Uh, to Nerd HQ and to Operation Smile means a great deal. Thank you very much, you Thanks. guys. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Picture, picture time, picture time. Can you guys stand? Stand for a picture. Awkward picture time.
All right, that's enough. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for these guys from Kick Ass 2, please. Keep it going, keep it going. Was that fun? Yeah! I love you guys. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that um, the signing that will be going on, just a little FYI, you all know to stay in your rows, we'll usher you out, right? And when you do, you're gonna make your way to, do you guys know where the Nerdist stage, where we've been doing all this stuff with Nerdist, right, in YouTube? So it's that awesome other stage, it's on the end of the concourse, so you just guys make your way up, go buy our merch booth, purchase something if you feel like it. <laughs> Uh, and, and make your way all the way to the end of the concourse, and uh, our lovely volunteers will be queuing you up for that signing. Sound good? Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first, uh, first of all, everybody pick your stuff up.